Hello, and welcome to Draw With Me. I'm Danny Gregory, and it's Thursday, and we're going to draw. So get your drawing gear on, your drawing equipment standing by, and uh, let's get ready to have some fun. All right, let's talk about a few things. First of all, Cambodia. What an incredible variety of ways people interpreted that virtual trip that we took to Cambodia two weeks ago. We weren't here last week. So um, I just love that. I love to see uh, I love to see drawings that are similar, different people's interpretations of the same exact subject matter. But I also love to see all the different creative ways that you guys interpret an idea like a virtual trip to Cambodia and the different media, the different uh, reference, the different uh, stories that you told. It's really fantastic. And you've each made it your own, which I love. So it's really cool to see. Um, what else? Uh, last week we weren't here. And um, my wife, JJ, and I took off a couple of days. And we traveled south from Phoenix, where we live, to Tucson, which is far away, like an hour and a half, but we, we were staying in the Sonoran Desert, the Sonoran, uh, is it called the National Park? I can't remember exactly, but it's this beautiful, essentially a forest that is all cactuses. So that is really something I just wanted to show you a couple of um, pictures from there. So this is, this is the view out of, um, out of our back, uh, the back of the little building that we were staying in. And, you know, it's really, it was it was supposed to be a, a huge storm while we were there, but it kind of wasn't. And we had some beautiful clouds and some, and I guess there was a bit of rain during the night, but it was Saguaro, Saguaro National Park, right? So, um, but look at how amazing these cactuses are. They're just, they're really dense, much denser than we see here in Phoenix, I think and lots of other varieties, and just the colors, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, yeah, this this guy was standing out there close to our room. Um, we stopped by this mission. This is a mission from the early 16th century, I think it was. So yeah, that is um, just beautiful. They seem to be like constructing the entire right side of it. I'm not sure what they're doing exactly, but it was just really beautiful. And I kind of thought, like, I wonder if the people who are working on it now are sort of the descendants of the people who worked on it 500 years ago, but but really beautiful. San, San Xavier del Bach. Thank you, JJ. Here I am learning that you don't lean against giant cactuses. And uh, here's JJ on our back little terrace there. It was just really relaxing and nice and, and beautiful. So that was really nice. And uh, here's here's us packing up to go, um, with one exception, which is Twiggy. T Twiggy did not get to come with us, um, but she instead stayed with her cousin, and uh, she had a fine old time. So don't feel bad for her. She... She uh, probably wouldn't have liked sitting around in the cactuses, but it was a really nice trip, and it was just nice. It was just nice to go somewhere for a couple of days to be somewhere other than the place we've been for over two years now. So yes, it was not. It was nice to get it, to have a change. I'm sorry that I didn't do really much work at least at the beginning of the week. So I didn't do a podcast last week. We didn't do draw with me didn't do stuff in Spark that I'm supposed to be doing, but, you know, there you have it. One thing that we did do, though, you may remember a couple of weeks ago, we did a special event here on YouTube and on Facebook in which we talked about the um, crisis in Ukraine, and we kind of asked people in the community if they would support the Ukrainian refugees in particular, who um, are really are leaving their homes with virtually nothing. And one of our sketchbook school students is lives in Poland. 
and she lives fairly close to the border of Ukraine. And all of these refugees are flowing across the border and into her, going through her town on their way to Warsaw. And they're staying in a refugee camp there, and she's actually taken a family in to stay with her. And, she, and we spoke to her about the idea of getting some art to give to the refugees. Now, we just thought it was important to show them that there are people all over the world who are thinking about them and supporting them, and to give them just a little bit of joy in their life that comes from art. And certainly we're all donating money and we're supporting various other causes, but this is a way of saying, let's make small pieces of art and we'll package them up together and send them. Well, we had, had an enormous response. We had, I think, easily a thousand. We kind of ran out of, out of. Uh, we stopped counting after a certain point, but we had probably at least a thousand. And um, in the last couple of days, we have taken all of the art that we received. We photographed it and documented it. We've packed it up carefully. And uh, let me just show you some of the stuff that people sent. Here's a quick little kind of cavalcade. So many different forms of things that people did. They said stickers, crocheting stuff, uh, things specifically about Ukraine with sunflowers, and also um, watercolors and messages. So many of these had messages that were written on the back of them just saying, we care about you, we're thinking about you, be strong, and we're there for you. So that was really powerful to see. Um, a lot of them use Google Translate to translate their English messages into something that the Ukrainians could understand. And it was just so amazing to see the variety. And some people sent one little piece of art, and some people sent dozens of pieces of art. And it was just great to, to see the variety of responses that people had and all the different, um, just the effort that people put into it. It was really touching and beautiful, and we can't wait for um, it to reach their hands to get to Ukraine. So um, what we did is we, we packaged it all up. We put it into little individual sleeves to protect it, and we packaged it all up into one big box. Here's JJ at FedEx. We shipped, I think it was like 15 pounds of art, um, and we sent it to Ukraine. So... Yeah, this is really nice. And we, um, I shared that little video on the schoolyard. I can share it in other places on social media as well because it was really powerful. And we'll see. I mean, we, I don't want to impose too much on our friend in Ukraine, in uh, Poland. She's already doing an awful lot for us, but maybe she'll be able to take a photograph or two of what happens when the package arrives. So thank you so much to everybody who participated in this. And... Um, Thank you for your support for the Ukrainian people. And um, I think it's just going to be nice. I mean, if you imagine somebody who, you know, leaves their home with a suitcase and has nothing, and then they get uh, art that says, we're thinking of you. I remember when we left, not to draw the parallel, but there's a vague parallel, when we left our home in New York at the beginning of the pandemic by accident. I've told the story before, but we had literally that's one carry-on between the two of us. And when we got here, um, one of uh, another person who lives here in Phoenix came and brought me some art supplies. And that was just something I'll never forget, that feeling of, okay, even though it's a total stranger, somebody who's thinking about you and giving you something when you have kind of nothing. So it was really, it was really powerful and... Um, this will arrive in Poland later next week, and we'll see how it goes. So thank you all for being part of it. It was really great. Um, so let's move into today's project. So we're going to be working on, on and I'm going to be using this Hanmula Burgund watercolor postcards. So it's, it's a little... Um, pad of postcards um, that are designed to be sh mailed to somebody. And if you would like one, we have a few from Hanamula that we're going to be giving away. If you'd like to get one of your own, write to us, info at sketchbookschool.com. Tell us why. why. Why do you want them? 
It tells a good story. It will raise your chances of being randomly selected to uh, get one. Um, and please send us your mailing address in your email. If you don't, we can't even consider it because we don't know where to send it to you. Um, and unfortunately, because we're sponsored by Hanamula USA, not unfortunately, we're happy that we are, but we will be um, we will be only able to give these out to people who have an address in the United States. So, um, so today, what what I want to do? So, let me just tell you what's motivating today's assignment, at least for me. Tomorrow, I am flying to Orlando, Orlando, Florida. I know it's glamorous, but uh, I'm going to go to um, a conference there, my first conference in a couple of years, non-virtual conference, uh, and it is a conference of people who manufacture and sell art supplies. Every art supply manufacturer will be there, every representative of every store, art store, and so forth. So we're going to be spending a few days, we're going to be talking about art supplies, uh, I'm going to be on a couple of panels talking about art making. And so I'm pretty excited to be going down there. And I thought, JJ isn't coming with me, nor is Twiglet. So I thought, well, I want to make a piece of art to send them from Florida. So I thought I would do something along those lines. So what I suggest to you is... Let's make a piece of art that you can send to somebody. Yes, we sent all those things to the Ukraine, but let's think of somebody else who you could send a little postcard. And it doesn't have to be a Hanamula Burgund uh, postcard necessarily. Honestly, from my experience with the uh, post office, you can send kind of anything as a postcard as long as it's basically the dimensions. I've seen people send pieces of wood uh, that were the shape of a postcard. I've seen people send pieces of cardboard. I've seen people send bananas, just put a stamp and an address on it. I've seen that shipped. So it's the it's all kinds of things that you can do with uh, at least the U.S. mail. So try it out. See, see if you can send something. So identify a person. Who's a person that you would like to send something to? And, uh, you know, check it out. That's what we're going to work on today. So Suzanne says she sent pieces of canvas before. Yeah, there's so many cool things that you can do. And um, yes, it will be pretty fun. So um, people are saying, hold on to my wallet. Yeah, I'm not going to be spending money there. I am there as a representative of Sketchbook School. It's not really like a giant marketplace exactly. It's really talking about what are new trends in art supplies, what are new products that are coming out. It's essentially a trade show. So hopefully I'll be getting some supplies, some samples that I can bring back and tell you about. It will be pretty fun. So um, it's not water, it's watercolor. They are Burgund. These are watercolor postcards, aren't they? Okay, I'm not sure what, what the difference is that JJ is saying. Burgund is watercolor postcards. Okay, well, they'll be cool whatever they are. So, um, Thank you. So, all right. Mary says she sent a two-liter plastic bottle in the mail. You mean just like you wrote your name on a plastic bottle, an address, and put a stamp on it? Interesting. Afia has sent a squash. Okay, there's some crazy stuff that people are sending out. <laughs> Linda sent record albums. Okay, so cool. Deanna has got the hand lettering. Yes, we did. So the hand lettering paper... We did that a few weeks ago. That was, and we gave out samples of that. So, all right. So, lots of cool things. So, I've been thinking, what kind of thing do I want to make to send home here? And I was thinking about, you know, these sort of classic postcards that are. I don't. Know, I think they still have them, but this is something that I think of as as a classic travel postcard. You know, where you have a map and then you have some like animals or some stuff. This is a particularly bad example. Looks like it was just cobbled together in the most... Not a lot of effort went into this one. We'll see if I can put a bit more effort into mine. This is a bit better. This is more the classic one. I like those two little ladies down there sunbathing, the palm trees, the little kind of banner, the sunshine state, and uh, and also like some of the little icons that are there, like the 
rocket taking off from Cape Kennedy and those kinds of things. This is a quite nice, a modern one, quite, quite beautiful. So to show you that you can do various things. I, you know, I may or may not do the icons. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. We'll see how I'm feeling. But I like the, I certainly like this lettering. It's quite nice. Um, and this is, this is, again, I like that Florida. I like the, the dimensional lettering there. And, yeah, this, is, this looks like it's sort of 50s or 60s, really. Quite nice. And, um, yeah, this is the one that I think I'm going to work from. He's just, I'm not, I'm not planning to copy it. I'm just looking for, honestly, first of all, for just what does a map of Florida even look like? Um, it's kind of postcard shaped, so that's helpful. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, and I like these little cartoony things, that woman in a kind of a bathing suit playing golf and the guy driving an old roadster, and it's just, it's nice. It's got some nice stuff in it. We'll see how far I get with that. So here's what I'm thinking. You can just draw along with me and draw a map of Florida if you'd like, but why not do something that is has some meaning to you, has some some context for you? So I probably should do it this way. Um, yeah, so... That is the shape. It's postcard-shaped. Yeah, so these postcards, they have like the little lines on the back. Put a stamp there. So I'm probably not going to do any of that until I get there. It doesn't make a lot of sense to write a postcard here at home and send it from there. But um, So I'm sort of thinking water... Maybe I'm thinking ink, actually. I'm thinking ink. So I might use some drawing ink. Do I want to start with maybe the color, maybe the background? Or do I want to... Maybe I want to draw... Maybe I should draw this shape of Florida. I think I'll start there. Kind of a little bit non-committal, but I can just kind of draw generally this sort of map. So yeah, so this is, it's sort of an interesting follow-up to um, virtual travel, the virtual travel thing that we did last week. I hope you enjoyed doing that. I thought it was really, it was really creative and interesting challenge um, to go and do a little bit of research. And I love that these these folks who have been doing virtual travel for a year now have gone to so many interesting places and they've done this process over and over again. I think that's really cool. I, I join them periodically. Um, they actually came to Phoenix a few weeks ago when, when it was the year anniversary, JJ and I made a little kind of mini documentary about Phoenix and what it would be like to visit it. And, uh, a lot of them ended up participating in a virtual uninvited pool party at my house. Didn't invite them, but they just showed up and, uh, scared my dog, and did cannonballs into my pool, did drawings of it, and that was their thing. Yes. What am I miss missing? Get off my lawn films, huh? Yes, indeed. All right. So there it is. It's... Let's, I'm going to let it sit and dry for a minute. It's a reasonably accurate thing, isn't it? I don't know if I got all the little... There's all these little kind of inlets here. Ooh, and I didn't put in Key West. But neither did these people. All right, well, I guess that doesn't qualify then. So... Okay, that's... That, that, it looks nice and sunshiny. So that is nice. And uh, I like working with colored ink sometimes. You know, it's, it's sort of like watercolor, but it's a little, it can be brighter colors and it can be, um, has a nice transparent quality to it that, that I like. You can see it's still, it's still taking a minute to dry. 
you know, my usual temptation is to just dive in and start like slathering on other stuff. Even when it's not fully dry, I'm going to try and avoid that today. Try and be disciplined. Yeah, I'm looking forward to going on to on this trip. I wish that JJ was coming with me, but she hates Orlando, among other reasons that she's not coming. And um, yeah, but it's just going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to be in a place with a lot of people. It's going to be interesting to just, I don't know, have like a normal kind of experience. I've been to lots of conferences and talked to a lot of them and all those kinds of things. So it is... Um, my camera was focusing on this painting of Jack in the background. My camera was like, oh, there's the face and ignoring my face. I guess, it, I guess it's a testament to how amazingly good that painting is. That my camera thought it was more realistic looking than I am. <laughs> right. So, okay, so this is reasonably dry. And... What should I do next? I think, um, I think, I guess I'll, I'll start to paint a bit of a background. I'm going to use this blue ink. I want to dilute it a bit. Some stuff in this dish. Yeah, but it's also going to be interesting. I mean, there's a lot of people who. Like, for instance, Hanamula, Joe from Hanamula, who is, um, has sponsored this program for quite a while. And uh, it's going to be nice to see him in person. And my friend David Pyle and other people who I've known from this business. Some friends we have at Blick, friends at Windsor Newton. It'll be nice to actually like have a meal with somebody rather than just endlessly being on Zoom, you know? So I'm looking forward to that aspect of it. Get it nice and diluted. I'm putting down basically just a little base here. Basically a base. Not to debase my work, but I think that having just... Bit of, bit of a, just a bit of a background is what I want. Because I want to make this not look like a painting so much as look like a, like a postcard. You know, this certain, make it a bit more graphic looking, perhaps. And, uh, So that's why I'm putting down like pretty flat color. Apropos of something completely other, I was uh, listening to this podcast by Michael Lewis. Michael Lewis is an author who I've always enjoyed his work, and he. He writes, I guess, the sort of business-adjacent books, a lot of the things that he writes, but he's he's a journalist, essentially. And he has a new podcast, or a new season of his podcast, which is about experts. What is the nature of being an expert? And are experts, what does it take to be an expert? Are experts um, taken seriously? Particularly in our times, it seems like experts, there's, like, there's a certain amount of... Uh, skepticism about expertise, which is unfortunate. But um, anyway, so this, this whole podcast is about the nature of expertise. Mike Lewis, as it happens, I went to college with him. He and I were the same year in school. I knew him pretty well back then. And he uh, kind of amazed me when he became this really famous best-selling author because... Uh, not the way he appeared when we were in college, but anyway. But I, I really like what he does, and his podcast is really great. I forget what it's called, By the Rules or something, or Against the Rules. It's something like that. Anyway, so 
I was thinking about the nature of being an expert and I was thinking about my own situation, my own position, weirdly, that I that I am showing you how to do this thing as if I was an expert in doing it. But I've literally never done this before. I've never drawn a map of Florida. I've only a few times even worked on this postcard material. I've never done anything kind of graphic like this exactly. There's just a lot of reasons that I have absolutely no, absolutely no standing as an expert in this field. And I think, frankly, that is true for like a lot of my approach to drawing is I just, I'm not an expert. And I, I, I'm here on YouTube talking about it or on Facebook or wherever it is you're seeing this as if I was an expert. My position makes it seem like I'm an expert, but I'm not an expert. I'm no more of an expert in any of this stuff than you are. Just not. When I'm not an expert in making your art. I'm barely an expert in making my own. My expertise isn't in using these materials. I kind of don't know what I'm doing most of the time. So if you're watching this thinking, oh, you know, he knows what he's doing. Let me just do what he's doing. I'm really sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I see that you all are talking about uh, Tiger Woods. So that's good. So I'm glad I'm not... Uh, I'm not um, overwhelming your attention. That's good. Sorobai says, I'm an expert on painting. Honestly, I'm not an expert on painting. I've never taken a painting class. I run a school, but I'm not really an expert. Um, so anyway. Um, so anyway, don't, don't apologize. Feel free to talk to each other about anything. If I, if I can't hold your attention, I'm fine with it. Just work. That's one of the nice things about hanging out together and doing Draw With Me is we just get to talk to each other while we're working. It's a nice thing. It's a nice thing about community. So anyway. Um, all right, so should, should I bring this guy into it? Maybe. Maybe I will start. I mean, that a lot of people just left because I said announced that I wasn't an expert. It's good. The rest of us amateurs can hang out. So here it is. This is where Orlando is. Kind of the least exciting part of Florida. It's not by the Atlantic Ocean. It's not here in the Gulf. It's just here. Orlando. I wonder where the name Orlando came from. I, I associate Orlando with wasn't there a book by Virginia Woolf called Orlando? Isn't there a isn't there a Shakespearean character named Orlando? Orlando. Now, do I do I want to put in other things? Like I could put in Miami. Miami's down here. Should I do that? I don't know. There's something kind of pure and ridiculous about this map. I'm sort, of, I'm sort of digging it. So here's what I think I'm going to do instead. Because again, I didn't really think about this, but I think I know what I'll do. I'll do something in... No, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with black, because black is going to show up better. And I think I'm just going to do a little bit of... A bit of fancy lettering. I hope JJ isn't watching this because this is supposed to be a surprise for her. You're not, right? You turned off your camera. You're you're out walking the dog or something. Yeah, um, my wife is not a fan of Orlando because she went there many times. She used to do commercial production and work with a lot of professional athletes 
there. There's a lot of professional athletes who end up living in Florida, and I think Orlando is particularly an attractive place for them for some reason. Yeah, so she went there a lot and felt like it was soulless and dead. So, yeah. So, now what? Oh, no taxes. That's the reason, yeah. There are no, ta no taxes? Or just like, yeah, less taxes. So maybe I could do, maybe I should do something like Because that's that will be me. It's not me yet, but it will be me. So okay. So I'm gonna let that sit for a second because now I'm thinking this is a little dull looking. But there's no reason I can't bring in other stuffs. Maybe bring in some colored pencils. I'm thinking like, what would this look like? Does this work well? You can barely see it. Can barely see that, but it makes it gives it something. Yeah, it's not, it's not adequate. Maybe a slightly different yellow. No, that's not really. That has zero effect. Okay. Sorabai is asking about the Art for All podcast. Yeah, we, we did do an Art for All podcast. There was one this week, wasn't there? Yeah, there was one this week. Um, there wasn't one last week. That's a bit better. Because now I could sort of put in some of these details, like these little kind of lakes there are here. I never even would have thought that there were lakes in Florida. But I guess there's all those sort of swampy bayous and all that kind of stuff. Here's Tallahassee. That is the capital. Yeah, so I am I think this this could work reasonably well because I can put in other geographic features, but without distracting from the important one, which is me and where I am. So yeah, that's going to be my interpretation. It's Florida. It's all about me. It's got some pretty accurate map, I have to say. Is it? See, this is uh, these are watercolor markers, so you can you can activate them, and then they become more fluid. You see, you can even get rid of them that way if I wanted to, which I didn't really, but I have, and I can come back and do it again. So, my goal really was to just make it a bit more visually interesting than just having. flat color. Layering is one of the, the really fun things to do because you layer stuff and then when you do, you know, it, it changes what you, what you see underneath and then you continue to layer it 
and activate it, and it just keeps changing to other things. But it feels organic. It feels analog, which is which is nice. I have a feeling your, yours is going to be more interesting than mine. I mean, are you making a map, or are you just doing like a? What are the other things that you see on a postcard, like just a landmark, or you know, if you got a postcard from a museum and you had a piece of art that was from the museum in your hometown, or an activity, you know, playing golf. Wildlife, something else representative. There's so many different ways you could take this idea. But it's really, my thought was, what can you use a postcard, the visual on a postcard, to tell some kind of a story? There is more to Florida than Orlando? Yeah, Jen, I don't know. I, I'm a fan of Miami. I do like Miami. Miami, I think, is a really, it's a cool place. I once spent a month there shooting a Super Bowl commercial, and that was, there's just like a lot of, a lot of energy there, good food, it's reasonably sophisticated. You know, I mean, there's lots of parts of Florida that, um, you know, that are the butts of jokes. I don't want to say anything too, anything too editorial about Florida because I imagine some of you live in Florida. Honestly, I've thought about what it would be like to live in Florida, and I, I felt reasonably good about that idea. That it might be a nice place to live. In some ways, it's like Arizona, except not as infernally hot, but uh, moister than the desert. So, what else could one do? I could take, I have some white ink here. Should I try it? What would I do with white ink? This is a bit wet, so I have to be careful, but... This is the kind of thing that I do and then ruin it. Like, oh, I know, I'll just get some white ink out. And then suddenly everything starts bleeding. And so I'm really, I'm kind of nervous. Kind of nervous. But. See, like I could put in some other, like I could put in, there's Miami. Or there's Fort Myers. There's Palm Beach, West Palm Beach, and there's St. Petersburg. Um, there's Clearwater. It's Kissimmee. I'm not sure what kind of name that is. I guess it's like a Native American thing. Gainesville, Daytona Beach. Home of spring break. It's probably packed with people right now. Tallahassee. The capital. Pensacola. Jacksonville. St. Augustine. Many places that I could be instead of Orlando. I mean, Orlando is home of Disneyland. Disney World, excuse me. Disney World. Epcot Center. What else is there there? Sebring. Interesting. I guess it's a racetrack or testing ground. There's a car is named after that. So, yeah. And then down here, Key West. See, that worked out reasonably well. I kind of like the look of that, which makes me nervous because I, as soon as I start to fall in love with the, the look of a thing, then I start to say, oh, let me push that a little bit further. And then suddenly I'm not that happy with it. Suddenly it gets away from me. God. 
This is too much of a good thing. It can spoil me. Everything's working out pretty well. Let me ruin it. But uh, I'm kind. Of, I'm kind of, this is not the way I thought it was going to look. But I'm kind of, kind of pleased with it. San Abel Island and Cocoa Beach. So Cocoa Beach, isn't that near? It's near Orlando. It's right there. But I wash my brush, so we're not going to have Cocoa Beach. That's the way it works. It's not Disneyland. It's Disney World. Yeah, Disneyland is in. California. So okay, I mean, I, th I mean, I could write Florida, but that's sort of beside the point. I think it's nice. I think she'll be really surprised and delighted to get it, don't you think? Oh, I have an idea. About the... No, that was a mistake. Why did I do that? Okay, well, I can get rid of it, but I kind of like it here. I don't want it here because that's not water. It's, uh, what is it, like Alabama or something? I don't know. I'm shockingly bad at American geography. I've never driven to Florida. Although I think it's a kind of a cool thing to do. It used to be a thing that you would drive from New York straight down and go to Florida. never really a driver in those days. All right, well, that's, that's my contribution to the world right now. Tim says, our, US, our school assignment was to draw the USA map with all the detail size. Consume my bedroom had a map said that our written philosophy of life and map would be kept in our school file. Boy, that is, sounds daunting. I, me, I actually had a friend who could... See, it's, got, it's focusing on Jack again. I had a friend who could draw a state and then draw the next state and eventually draw the entire country. Like you draw like Ohio and then draw Pennsylvania next to it and work his way out until he had drawn the entire thing. Is there now ocean north and west of Florida? No, there isn't. That's why I had to get rid of those squiggly lines. I think, yeah. So, yes. Thank you, Sharon. Um, Jenny says, maybe we can mail it to someone who enters the contest this week. Make sure to include your address. I'm mailing it to you. I'm making this to mail to you. I'm making it to mail. But if you want to pass it on, forward it to somebody else, that's fine. <sighs> Nellie's sister was the flower girl in Roy Disney Jr.'s wedding in around 1950. Yeah, Roy Disney. I recently read this, I thought, really great uh, biography of Disney, talking about Roy, the, the brother. Roy was Walt's brother and Roy Junior was his son, so the nephew, who eventually became, for a while, the CEO. And I actually worked with him because I did a commercial with him. And he was an incredibly heavy smoker. I don't think I'm giving anything away. I think he may even be dead now, Roy Junior. He was a really heavy smoker. And we had to constantly take breaks so that he could leave the set and go and smoke. I mean, he was ch almost chain smoke. He went through like three packs of cigarettes in the in the shoot. And he looked, he had kind of like that little Walt Disney mustache, the little one. Those are the two things I remember about him. <laughs> the things that you get remembered for. Yes, he was a heavy smoker with a little mustache. Oh, by the way, he was the CEO of Walt Disney Company. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was a pleasant fellow. I, I, I liked working with him. So there you have it, my, my postcard. Maybe he was nervous. Yeah, 
maybe. I mean, he was the CEO of a giant company. I'm sure he'd been. And in fact, he had, he, he had taken over. Do you remember how Walt would always introduce the Walt Disney show, Wonderful World of Disney? And it'd be like, hi, here's Walt Disney in his office. Like my favorite thing ever. Walt, usually in a gray suit in his office with all the books. And, and um, yeah. And then his brother took, his nephew took over that job after after Walt was dead, of course, and he would introduce it. And then Michael Eisner was doing it for a long time. I guess Michael Eisner's gone now, too. But, um, yeah, and I remember going to, in fact, in Orlando, now that I think about it, they have a replica of Walt's office. They have a replica of his office, and it had six ashtrays in it. But you could stand there. It had like glass. It was like going to the Museum of Natural History, like a diorama. There was the office. I don't think it was the real one because he didn't work in Florida. But there were six ashtrays. No, I didn't meet Walt Disney. I met Walt Disney's nephew, Roy Jr., who was the CEO of Walt Disney for a while. Walt Disney, unfortunately, died when I was a mere youth. Yes, Walt Disney was a smoker, of course. Who wasn't? Who wasn't a smoker back in the day, right? Yes. <sighs> All right, well, that was good. That was fun. I hope, I'm looking forward to seeing your postcards in our cavalcade next week. And when I come back, I'll tell you a bit about mm -hmm, what I experienced, what I learned, what I found out there in the, uh, the, the heart of the art supply industry. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to get, get the newest, the lowdown on the newest gear. You know how Apple always has, like, it's a really big deal. It's like the Apple, when they have a big conference and they say, like, here's the new computers coming out. Well, this is sort of the equivalent of that, except it's about markers and pens and craft stuff, too. It's, I think it's going to be, I mean, for folks like us, what could be better? Really cool. So, and of course, I will be writing this postcard and mailing it to JJ, who wants to then pass it on to someone else. There you have it. All right. So if you would like this watercolor postcard set of your own, write to info at scheduleschool.com. Um, send us your mailing address. Don't forget your mailing address, folks. It's amazing. I think half of the people do. Do forget it. Um, what else? Have you have you started subscribing to dannysessays.com? No? Haven't done it? Can't be bothered? All you have to do is type in dannysessays.com, put in your name and an email address, and I will spend hours writing an essay for you every single Friday. Doing it tomorrow. I'm going to send one out tomorrow. Even though I'm going to be on a plane leaving for Florida, I am tireless in my commitment to sending it to you. All you need to do is give me your address so I know where to send it. Yes. Um, Fish070912 would like to mail her postcard to me or his postcard to me. Yes, by all means. By all means. Um, our post office box is somewhere. JJ, can you put our post office box up so we can... People can send stuff to us there if they want to. That would be cool. Um, and what else? Art for All podcast. Skipped a week. Don't be put off by that. You can listen to the podcast. It's back. Got a fresh episode just came out. Got another one coming out on Monday. All good. Podcast is steaming along. Jack and I are having fun doing it. We've kind of agreed that it's like one of the highlights of our week. This is also a highlight of my week, by the way, hanging out with you. But Monday sitting with him and talking about stuff. We really like doing it. And we record it on YouTube. So if you can't be bothered to actually have a podcast appear on your phone, because that's too much effort, you can just come to YouTube and watch it here, because we record it. Um, what else? Hashtag SBS Draw With Me. That's what you do to share whatever you made today. Share it. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on Instagram. You can do it on Schoolyard. Put hashtag SBS draw with me when you post it, excuse me. And then we'll collect it and it will be part of the opening of next week's show. 
And finally, subscribe to this channel. If you subscribe to it, then you'll know the next time I do one of these, which you'll also know because it's going to be next Thursday. Um, but yes, so subscribe. Why not? Subscribe. It will be, it will be the, all the more fun. Ooh, Deb Peterson has just sent some horrific URL. I'm not sure what that's about. but um, Yeah, so thank you for joining me. Thank you for making a little postcard. I hope you've done something interesting and, and unusual with it. You know, maybe keep working on it and uh, send it, take a picture of it before you send it. So, yes, and as JJ says, we understand the time zone was wonky today. We will fix it. It's a vestigial remaining, remaining thing from the fact that the time zones changed. The time zones didn't change, but you know what I mean. Daylight savings time and all that. And here in Phoenix, we don't care about daylight savings anymore. We never have. And in fact, no one else will, right? Because the, the wonderful Senate passed a law saying we don't have to think about it anymore. I'm sure it's not going to pass the House, but we'll see. Instead of worrying about Supreme Court justices, they're worrying about our times, our daylight savings time. Um, yes, don't send links to my postcard art. Yeah, Deb, that's not really helpful because I can't do anything about that. Just just hashtag it. Just put it on thing and hashtag it. That's the only way we can work because we, we just collect hundreds of these things and it's simple to, it makes it simpler for us. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Okay, but yes, it'll always be 9 o'clock Pacific. If YouTube says something else, YouTube's crazy. They're crazy. They're crazy but you don't need to be. All right, well, thank you very much. See you again soon. And uh, be well, make art, be cool, have fun, don't get COVID, support Ukraine, etc. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. See you again soon.